Blog Talk Radio. <laughs> Chatting with Nat is a podcast for independent women seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower women. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard. Chatting with Nat, this is Natalie Jean, this is Natalie Jean, and today we have the honor of having mother daughter music duo Ruth Weber and Emilia Lopez Yanez. Ruth Weber and Emilia Lopez Yanez are a mother daughter music team who perform in several genres, including classical, folk, and children's music. The two are both classically trained musicians with Master of Arts degrees in music. They work as college music educators in the communities in addition to concertizing throughout the U.S. and abroad. The Billboard charting duo's music has appeared on television and film soundtracks with symphonies and in choral and orchestral music arrangements. The two have won numerous awards for their two children children's album, Cocowanda Bay and the Spaceship That Fell in My Backyard, including the Parents' Choice Award 2020, Mom's Choice Gold Award 2020, Kids First, three-star endorsement 2020, grand prize Hollywood Music and Media Award 2020, LA Music Critics Award, the Creative Child Magazine CD of the Year Award 2020, the Family Choice Award 2018, the John Lennon Songwriting Grand Prize Children's Music 2018, and National Association of Parenting Products Awards NAPA 2018 and 2020, Cloud International Music Awards, Children's, and many more. Their song, We're Gonna Be Legendary, is, in the, is the theme song for the San Diego public school system. The duo's most recent album, I Had a Dream, Songs of an Immigrant, began as a labor of love when Ruth set the poems of her late grandma, Betty Karen Hurt, to music so that the story of her impoverished childhood in Russia, her daring escape during the Bolshevik Revolution and her life as an immigrant in the United States to be forever memorialized. The songs have won recognition with the American Prize, the Golden Bo- Golden ah, Boy, I'm tongue tied. The Global Music Awards and the Radio Music Awards. The album has been chosen to become part of an exhibit in the Anu Museum, Museum of the Jewish People in Tel Aviv, Israel. Ruth Weber is the music director of Billboard of the Billboard charting group San Diego Jewish Men's Choir, which has toured nationally and received high critical acclaim. Recently, she was the choral arranger director on the soundtrack of the multi award winning film One Little Finger by Rupam Sarma about ability in disability. Emilia Lopez Yanez was one of the featured vocalist oboists on this soundtrack and plays with many orchestras in the greater Southern California area. The duo received their first film awards in 2022 with two accolade international film awards, four Malabar International Music Festival Awards for film and nomination from the Music Cities, film awards for Best Music for Sustainability. The duo will be performing locally and touring the West Coast through the summer 2022. Let's give them a round of applause. Hi, Ruth and Amelia. How are you? Hi. 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 Thank you for having us. So that was a mouthful. To be here. That was a mouthful. <laughs> the bio is long, and congratulations to you and all of your accolades. Um, I think that's awesome. Oh, thank you. Awesome, awesome, Thanks awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, the John Lennon one, especially, that was a hard one to get. So, I mean, that's that's really, 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 really cool. We were really excited about that one. Yeah. I would be too. I mean, that's seriously, <laughs> that's seriously a hard contest. It's a bit, let me reiterate. That's a very hard contest. So that that speaks volumes uh, to your work. So yeah, again, um, <laughs> thank you. So how have you two been doing uh, since this? Let me. How do I put it? Because I, I don't even know how to call this world anymore. Let me see. Here we go. <laughs> The election pandemic, um, George Floyd, Ukraine, mass shootings, monkeypox. Uh, what else do we have? Roe versus <laughs> Wade. January sixth thing going on. How have how have you been 
during this. I mean, I, I call it, I actually call it a different word. I'm not going to call it on here. But this crazy world that we're living in, how have you been dealing with all this? Oh, gosh. Well, <laughs> every day is a new adventure, I guess you have to say. Definitely. I, 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 think, I mean, yeah. yeah, go, you go, Amelia. Oh, no, I, I think it's it's even hard to, like, it, it doesn't even seem real. And I, I, I just worry that we're all getting too numb to all these yeah. things. You said it. <laughs> you said it. And I'm glad that you said it. <laughs> because I actually, it's, it's, it's incredible. So two, I think it was two years ago, because I just don't know what era we're living in anymore. Um, I really yeah. not <laughs> Where do we go from here? And one of the songs is called Numb. It speaks volumes to everything that's going on today. And it's, it's basically that we've come, become so desensitized to what's going on mm-hmm. in the world. This, and we just become so none. It's like, you know, one part I'm like, you turn this, you switch the channel, I turn my back. It's like, oh, okay, there's a shooting. <laughs> All right, everybody. Oh, yeah. Let's pray, blah, blah, blah. And then two days later, okay, back to normal. So, yeah. So it's been, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Been it's been, I just, I just, you know, sometimes I have to pinch myself to see if I'm not living back in the 1930s, 40s, that I go back in time. Because when you think of playing, right. as you don't think 2022. You don't think 21st century. So that I mean, we, had, we yeah. even had that we had the cicadas as well that came. Well, there was time for oh, them. Gosh. Yeah, I, I forgot. About, forgot <laughs> yeah, and the hornets. What were the, the yeah. or the things that like ate the bees or something? Yeah. I don't even. And the bees and the bees. Yes, the animals, the insects, and the animals were coming out. Now, mm-hmm. one of the questions yeah. I like to ask people is this. You know. Obviously, the pandemic was awful. People lost lives, limbs, uh, are living with long-term effects with COVID. I have COVID. I had it twice. I've been back whacked, boosted, you name it. Everything's done to me. But I do have long-term effects, which is annoying. Mm -hmm. Um, So, but at the same time, there's been pros. And when I talk about pros, this is what I talk Mm -hmm. about. Uh, Family members. Now, this is not supposed to be weird, but in today's world, uh, people are always rushing to do things. You know, I saw families walking together. I know colleagues that decided to cut back on work because they realized they weren't spending enough time with their families. You know, climate change, my God, when we were not out there, the pollution level went down and um, the trees and the animals were just like, oh my God, they were singing out loud and (laughs) hopefully they don't come back. I mean, even the squirrels were like, maybe my family members are not going to get hit by these cars. You had, there were a lot of articles on on people quitting their job because what they realized, they realized really that the world is really short. You know, life is short. Mm-hmm. And I do something that's going to be more in line with my destiny, my passion. I need to make money, but I need to be happy doing it. You have artists like us um, that release mm-hmm. the singles, EPs, albums, decide to rebrand. Some decide to quit music altogether, just like I'm not doing this stuff anymore. I'm just too much. So what I'm trying to get at is it was a time for self-introspection. Even if you were still working and you were working from home, you really had time to think about who you wanted to be, how you wanted to be perceived as an artist, as a person or whatever. So what did you guys think about during that time? Did you decide to change anything? Did you decide to stay as you are? What did you think about? I mean, we've been really trying to work on, at least for me, legacy projects. You know, I'm oh, I'm Amelia's mom, so I'm way older than her, and I want <laughs> to leave some kind of legacy behind right. of some music that's meaningful to me. So our newest album, which coincidentally was about my grandma who escaped from what is now Ukraine during mm. the Bolshevik Revolution. I mean, who was going to know that that yeah. soon after the release, the same thing was going to happen. So, um, I mean, we are glad to do have done something that cements our family legacy right. for, you know, generations to come. In, in addition to being, you know, a, a body of really, I think, interesting work. And, right. and our kids, as a kids duo, we wanted to do something for the kids. So we had the Sunday fun day thing that we did every week 
which was, you know, our theme is kind of taking care of the environment. So oh, yeah. each each Sunday on Facebook Live and one other one, I forget what that was because Amelia is the tech savvy one. Yeah, we would do, um, you know, we do a craft off out of recycled materials and right. then sing uh, songs of, about taking care of the environment and everything. So uh, we were fortunate because Amelia came, was living in LA and then she came down here to live and we could do all sorts of things that we weren't able to do before, right. like mm-hmm. record an album in my closet. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like it. You got to find just to record and recording in the closet. That's right. That's to do it in. Uh, I mean, yeah. It, 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 and Amelia, what about you? No, I mean, you know, all the things you were saying, definitely, we we got to do, but you, I almost didn't even realize we were doing them at the time. Right? You know, I got to I got to go back home, and we got to record this album that my grandma had been really taught, you know, encouraging us to do for so long. We just never really had the time, and then it was really a passion project that was all about family. So I mean, just ended up, and then. Of course, it was very timely with the release of it and what's happening in the world. But oh. and it's just all of those things you don't realize they're happening until they kind of happen. <laughs> but to backtrack on the whole Ukraine thing, it's just extremely sad. And I think that what's going to happen with the United States, and this is just my opinion, it's going to be a stain on the United States because they should have done a lot more. When I hear the stories of what some of the Russian soldiers have done to the people out over there besides mm-hmm. them, but the rape and the torture and it's, it's just, I just, I, I, I don't know where the world is going. And for me, the United States is very self-involved. Yes, they've done, they've done sanctions and that's great, but that's not enough. <laughs> that's just not enough. To, to be able to watch this live and be part of this, it's just extremely sad, extremely sad. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a person, I suffer from depression, and when I look at things like this and the, and the shooting, you know, little kids, it puts me in a deeper depression, and, and I'm going through menopause, and that doesn't yeah. help. Um, <laughs> and I have insomnia and all this stuff, and it's just, I think it's just extremely, it's just extremely tragic. Now, yeah. how did you both get into the... Obviously, you have degrees in music, but what was it about music that you decided to say, okay, Ruth and Amelia are like, I, I they're just music. Did, was it? Did you come out of the womb? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm going to do music. Music is me. Or was it you heard, you saw, and you just wanted to be part of this industry. I mean, you should speak about that, Amelia, but I think she was... <laughs> kind of wired in that way I mean, <laughs> well uh, I mean my mom it, yeah my mom is you know not a uh is she said that she prayed when my brother and I were, were going to be born that we would be musicians oh wow <laughs> because <laughs> you know I mean I never thought that life. I would have yeah I never thought I would yeah. have kids and so I was like, oh, what am I going to do with them? I really hope they're going to be musicians so they can have my passion that I, you know, love. I love that, though. That's awesome. <laughs> so you can imagine she started grooming us very young. To be <laughs> Which is, I mean, I mean, I feel so lucky because everyone else I know in the music field or, in, for example, like an undergraduate, so many kids were going there and were so discouraged or Right. You know, just the, quite the opposite of me. And here I am, like, my mom wants me to be a musician. <laughs> yeah. I think that is so awesome. I know my, you know, my father is a singer, and he used to sing all the time here, but it's not like they encouraged me to do music and stuff like that. And my mom, you know, so they say, oh, I wish you had taken piano lessons. I'm like, me too, because I still have to learn how to do that. But, um, <laughs> Little story, I've had a smart keyboard in my house for five, six years in the box, still haven't opened it every year. I'm like, I'm going to open it. I'm going to learn because I think it's, 
it's critical for artists to at least learn to play one instrument. I tried guitar and I felt like a contortionist and was like, ah, I don't know. This won't work for me. Then later, <laughs> like, I got the smaller guitar, you know, they make them for women and stuff like that. I was like, okay. But the, the year's not over. So I made this open. Then <laughs> right, right. Like, you go for it. Yeah. yeah. There's still six months. <laughs> yeah. I think that's awesome that, you know, your mother was so supportive of you and prayed for it, and it happened. So, hey, prayer does yeah. work. <laughs> Prayer does work. Yeah, now, does. how important is it for both of you uh, to be authentic, you know, as people and in your music? I mean, I, I know, think I, our I, music is not mainstream music at all. <laughs> so, Definitely. I, yeah. Go ahead, Mia. I think, you know, a lot, I think both of us, uh, we we approach it slightly differently, but um, you know I, I definitely think we both approach it in an authentic way. Like the music kind of just comes to my mom, and it's really amazing. She'll just wake up and she has this song ready. Right. <laughs> um, and for me, for me, I really am really inspired by writing about things that need to be changed in the world so like things you know such as our kids albums we really wanted to make a difference right. not just write a kids album um and same thing with our family album it had it it has to be something that inspires us okay. <laughs> i think i love that i absolutely love that because i'm all about that um yeah um, I'm a social impact message writer. I've turned into that. Yeah, you have all different, all different yeah. languages and everything in your music. Yeah. Yes, and, that's awesome. You know, one of the reasons why is I always, I'm a Sagittarius and I don't like doing the same thing over and over, but the other reason why is I like being diverse in music and I like to be able to do what I want with music. I don't like to, you know, mm-hmm. you do verse, verse, chorus, verse, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, that's a standard, and sometimes I do it, but now a lot of times I don't. I have to be able to express myself the way that I want to express myself, and I love artists that do that as well, because I think Mm -hmm. for so long, uh, there's been just this standard of writing that needs to evolve. I had another conversation with another artist. She's like, well, you know, the radio stations, they like it to be a specific way, but I said, why? We've enabled them to want it that way. Music cannot mm-hmm. just be the same every single time. So when you listen to the radio station, you basically hear the same stuff over and over and over, same artists. I told people, you know, uh, do these people have to die off so that other in, uh, mm-hmm. other artists, but it's, 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 it's true. So other artists can be, yeah. I mean, yeah, Taylor Swift, Jay-Z, Beyonce, all that sounds great. Yeah, they're lovely. But I'm, I'm you know, enough is enough. There's, other artists that need to be heard and we know all that stuff is play to play and blah 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 you know i i'd like to do a challenge to radio stations find three independent artists that you really like that are doing everything themselves and play them it's not going to hurt and might even help Mm -hmm. them get more listeners because i know during the uh, during the pandemic that's when a lot of people got to learn and know more about independent artists because they had the time to do so you know because you know a lot of live streaming we were out there doing our thing um but yeah i like people just just just, you know just create from your soul your heart when when i started out music i used to listen to the music portion of it and not the lyrics now as i've gotten older and more involved in music i listen to the lyrics more so than anything else because i like to see what's coming from that artist's soul what are they trying to are they emoting what are they emoting you know am i feeling everything that they're trying to say that that's how i um when i'm voting in the uh, the grammys and stuff like that i like to see the artists and their artistry i don't need you to tell me that x y and z was playing your uh, on your album because i really don't care but i want to know what you did you know mm-hmm. like people, mm-hmm. people like to do that they like to push the other the, the artists on there and I, listen if a person can afford to have major artists on there good for them but i could care less you know, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm, I'm a truth speaker. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, um, I could, I don't, I don't, that's no, that doesn't mean anything to me. And I love mm-hmm. the two 
because you, you you started out with children's music, and I think children's music is actually one of the toughest categories. Um, yeah. Even if you've had a child, it's still a tough, a tough, it's a tough subject. Um, I was actually talking to um, somebody that had a conversation with uh, Spotify executives, and they were saying what what they consider children's music is children's music that's actually teaching people, to teaching the children um, something, to do something. And I think that's lovely. Um, but there's so many yeah, different right. ways to teach uh, children through music. And like I tell, mm-hmm. um, I tell artists all the time that music is our superpower. It is. Because we can do so mm-hmm. much music. We can heal. We can move mountains. We can allow people to right. express whatever they want to express at that time. Um, mm-hmm. And we can give them something. Uh, and also that during the pandemic, people were uh, craving the truth and hope. And they needed something to gravitate to, you know, uh, music that mm-hmm. encouraged them. Because during that whole election thing, fake news, blah, 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 people were just tired. They're just like, I need something. Good. So they might have gone, you know, to your music and said, my God, Ruth and Amelia, they've got it going on. And they're really getting me excited about life and all kinds of different things going on in the world. Now, how did you get into the children's music first? Oh, well, um, when Amelia and her brother were <clears throat> really young, uh, we had a, a little trio and... um we would sing in some local fairs, and uh, they had um, Borders bookstores then that we would yeah, yeah, sing some concerts in there. <laughs> yeah, and um, but uh, when my son got to be like ten or something, he thought it wasn't his. He thought it wasn't cool to sing that kind of music, <laughs> so he didn't want to do that anymore. And you know the kids were both taking lessons on instruments, so they wanted to more. They were more interested in doing the classical music, so we kind of put this on the back burner. But but we did release an album, the three of us, and then okay. um, uh, then they were in college age. They were like, oh, that was so much fun when we used to do that. We should do another one. And right. So uh, my son actually wrote, co-wrote some of the songs and on the our albums and <clears throat> he did most of the background track backup tracks for it too so um it was something that we had done from when we were when the kids were Amelia was just three when we did the first album so that's awesome we oh. just resurrected that <laughs> I mm-hmm. mean when we would go on trips in the car just to keep the kids busy, I would do like ear training. Like I'm gonna go. Right. Mm, I you sing a note that's five higher. Mm-hmm, you know, and we would do stuff like that in the car just as a game. But um, <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted to do something that wasn't like go find the red car or something, <laughs> something different. You know, as that's going by. <laughs> No, I like that. You did it a different way and that's that's you're a cool you're a cool mom. That's the bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> you're just cool and awesome. Um now <laughs> do you plan to re- to release more kids music in the fr- future and touring plans? Oh yeah, we have a a song that we recorded called Bear's Birthday. Okay. And um that will, that's going to come out at the end of the summer, a single. We did, uh, in the last holiday season, we did release a holiday season, a holiday single as well. Um, so the Bear's Birthday, that will be our newest song that goes on tour with us. Okay. But yeah, because this, this summer, at the month of August, we, we have shows in San Diego, LA, and all the way up to Seattle is our destination. And, and so... That's our busy month of that fun yeah. stuff. It's now, so how, great to be able to do it with real kids in person, you know. I know, I know. <laughs> ooh, 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 this world has been great, great. Um, <laughs> now, who came up with your, because sometimes you, you wear costumes, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. We, the, we wrote this song 
the spaceship that fell in my backyard. It just yeah. happened that that the words just came out like that, and then I don't know which of us was like, well, <laughs> we should just you be an alien and I'll be the little girl <laughs> and you land in here because that's going to be our song. This spaceship that fell in our backyard, and so yeah, we naturally. we have this, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we just have this giant spaceship banner that we go in and out of during the show okay. you know so that just how yeah and how actually developed so my yeah. yeah and my my aunt my mom's sister is a graphic designer and she created our album artwork so she kind of created this artwork that was we loved so much and so then we actually based our outfits on her artwork. <laughs> so she con- she kind of created the idea of what we our look, I guess. And then my uh, my stepdad, he w- was brilliant and set like sought out to find everything, and he kind of actually put our whole look together. Well, that's really cool. I love that. See, that's family. <laughs> you no, know, you don't hear a yeah. lot about it anymore. I love that. Yeah. It's fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, I hear you have also have a new single out. Can you tell me about that? Oh, yes. Um, one of um, my, well, my Facebook friends that I've been, um, you know, writing to for a long time, Mike Greenlee, he's a really excellent lyricist. Mm-hmm. And um, I just happened to have a conversation with him, and he was really He said he hadn't written for quite some time because his husband had passed away a little less than a year ago. And he said, and he was the music to my life. So I, uh, the music to my words, he said, the music to my words. And then I was like, wow, you, you know, you should really, that's a really great title. You should write some lyrics to that and then I'll put it to music because I can already hear what the music would sound like to right. the music to my my words you know and so that kind of got his juices flowing and he he came up with some really awesome uh, lyrics and um, our hope was that with the song it would help other people that were were really hurting because they're soulmates or their life partners had passed away and so that was it it started out to to be you know a a memory of his husband who was a legendary DJ he was very influential in the disco movement and so um so it it had two purposes um to cement that legacy and then also to just help others who there's so many people going through that same thing, especially during the pandemic. So when so many people passed away, it, <laughs> I think the song resonates with them. And, and then Amelia was the vocalist for that single. So we got to all three become part of that project. Yes. Um, Mike Greenlee is great. I did my, I did my song. Uh, well, our song, love your own power, the female anthem. Um, that is part oh. of, the, yeah, part of the show. Uh, uh, so yeah, I know him well. He's a great guy, and yeah, I heard what yeah. his his husband passing, which is truly sad. Um, and he's just awesome. So let me play the song. <laughs> Music to my life.
very moving and touching. Beautiful, beautiful vocals. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I mean that. Oof, less. I can. I can. Yeah. It, I mean, I, I can see why, based on the lyrics, why you're like, oh, I have music to this because I could hear it too. I'm just like, you know, you can you can feel like the pain, and you can feel. Uh, like, um. Obviously, Amelia does a wonderful job expressing that. Um. That was just awesome. 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 Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, Dad, back in the day. <laughs> what, do you, what do you both love most about being an artist? Hmm. That's a good question. Well, I like <laughs> that. I like that my day is not the same routine every day. Mm. Yeah. Um. Um. You know, I doing all the kind of different activities and the average person. And I also like when you're creating a new product, it's like having, create, giving birth to a new kid or something, you know. Right. Like, <laughs> and you send your little kids yeah. out into the world. Okay, do good kids, you know. And, right. Uh, I, I, you know, if I had a what I consider like a regular job, I wouldn't have the satisfaction of having something like, like those that I send out into the world, you know? Yeah. Gosh, I, I feel the same way. <laughs> I think it definitely a different uh, things every day is so exciting and fun. But I right. also really enjoy collaborating with other artists and mm-hmm. getting to experience new things through music. Right. I feel lucky that I get to do that. That is awesome. I love <laughs> um, the effect that the music has on people. You know, oh, doing, yeah. right. doing music is very hard. People don't get how hard the uh, <laughs> creating music is. And the, the, amount right. of, the amount of work that goes behind this is just crazy and every single day I'm like I don't know if I want to do this anymore it's just it's a, it's hard it's a lot of work and and then somebody will email yeah. me or call me or I want something or, or something comes about and I'm just like okay universe okay god I'm gonna keep doing this you keep telling me right telling me that I've, I've done something to, to to affect their lives and I that's right. how I'm still here doing this uh, stuff. This woman told me one time, I met with her um, this past year, and she was saying how this person came to her show. And after her show, after her performance, he came up to her and says, my God, her per- performance changed his life because he was going to go, oh. home and, go home and kill himself. And after her, oh. yeah, and she, he said she changed his mind. Based on her lyric wow. her motive, I don't know what it was, but her performance just drew breath, drew new breath to his life. And he's like, you know what? Oh I my have goodness. That, that's the power that we have. And, and, and I just, I think people need to be reminded of that, that, you know, sometimes that's people funny. just need to hear something that you have to say. And it can make the mm-hmm. whole world from a, the biggest difference in their life. Um, and that's why, you know, after hearing her story, I'm like, okay, I'm going to continue to do this. Um, right. right. <laughs> and it's expensive too, to do all this stuff. So I'm like, better get that money, get it, get the money coming in as well. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. I had a songwriting teacher when I was first starting doing songwriting, Jack mm-hmm. Siegel, he wrote like when sunny gets blue and a lot of jazz standards. And um, he always used to say, you know, um, songwriting is like one quarter inspiration, but it's three quarters perspiration. So if you're not interested in doing the three quarters of the hard work, then, you know, you probably aren't going to reach that level of greatness that you desire with your songs, you know. Amen to that. It's very true. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is the most important result 
that has come out come about from making your your latest album? Hmm. Oh, I'm most excited that this is going to be in an exhibit in a museum. Yeah. <clears throat> um, we. Um, I just submitted it on a whim to this this other museum, uh, the Holocaust Museum in Israel. I, I submitted it, but I said since my grandma didn't immigrate actually during the Holocaust because the Bolshevik Revolution was a little before the start of the Holocaust, so right. they couldn't include it in their museum, but that this other museum, who is, which is supposedly the biggest museum, Jewish museum in the world, um, that she was pretty sure that they would want it because they don't have anything like this. Right. Um, so um, when we contacted us and they said that they were going to put our our videos and the album up, it's on the online exhibit and the in-person exhibit, and then we have all the pictures of my grandma's life story, too, and her her like autobiography is going to be is is gradually going up in in the museum. So, I mean, that was like wow. That's what my grandma would have wanted with her story because right. all the all the songs we based them using her poems. You know, she also so, always dreamt of going to Israel, right? Mom and right, never actually yeah. made it. Mm-hmm. Right. So this is sort of like a piece of her made it. Right. That's beautiful. I think that's awesome. Now. Yeah, I mean, and all the same things that you were talking about, like what's going on in Ukraine right mm-hmm. now, that was going on then too because, like, soldiers were occupying her house um, where they lived and, they're, you know, her, they were hiding her sister under a bag of, potatoes because she was already had reached puberty and they wanted to make sure no soldiers were going to find her and the mom was almost molested two times but the kids screamed so loudly that the soldiers left and ended up not doing that but like a lot of you know they used to hide in the trenches when the soldiers were going to come hide in the trenches in the back in their backyard mm-hmm. and, you know, a lot of the things that are happening is just like a re rerun and modernization of what she was going through right. back then. Mm. Was mm. Like one of her sisters, they hit her. You know, they made these long journey from Russia over. They f- left on ships in France, so they had to travel by by straw hay cart and all these weird ways and they had one sister hid in an oven for a while when Mm. soldiers were coming it was just like really unthinkable things which same as now it's like why 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 haven't people learned from that this all happened before why does it have to happen again you know yeah it's crazy I mean the world is just I don't know I don't even I don't even have words for the world anymore. It's just, it's just baffling. Um, yeah. So I have another one of your songs called Mushrooms. Tell me what that's about. That um, That's the first song on our album because the songs are in chronological order of her life. They're like a cycle of songs. And so when she was eight, they, they were very poor. And so to, to help get food for the family then mom her mom sent her out into the woods with no shoes to pick mushrooms and berries and they they ate that so um she had written this poem about that and so that's the first song because she was the youngest in that poem all right well let's play it
Tifo, again, another one. What I love about that song in particular is the imagery um, that it gives me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think obviously the vocals are excellent. Uh, and I think because of that, vocals are excellent, allows you to be in that moment. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now, one of the last questions is uh, the question that I have for you is what do you what would you wish you had known before you got into the music industry? You know, before you got into it, what is it that you wish you had known? Hmm. Hmm. It always stumps. <laughs> stumps. I think stumps people, but there are so many things I wish I I mean, I I think I would have. I think I didn't realize that I would have gotten so much joy with working with other art with collaborating because I always thought like of songwriting would be like maybe a little lonely because when I started out I always wrote everything by myself, right. but. But then I really have grown to really love doing that with other artists, and it changes up your music so much because everybody has different flow of their lyrics and and different styles, so you get to absorb a little bit of all that. And mm-hmm. um, I I think I would have advised people more like start writing with other people right away. Because I was like trying to make my own craft great without, you know, getting the influences from other people, which has really brought in my my horizons and and enabled me to work on projects that are super important with other people too, you know. Right. Right. Yeah. I think for me, it's that everybody is like kind of just trying to figure it out as well. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, every, and you don't have to be in ba- like you don't you you can be open about that and the more open you are, the more open everybody else is. And then we all just make each other feel more comfortable. <laughs> you know, nobody really knows what they're doing, I guess. <laughs> that's, very, that's very true. I mean, for me, obviously, in the 21st century, we deal with a lot more than people than back in the day. I mean, we have to, our music is on a lot of social media platforms, streaming platforms. It's a lot more work, a lot more yeah. work. You know, mm-hmm. for the longest time, I didn't want to be on TikTok. I didn't want to. And then I started working with this publicist and like, well, you know, it's the thing right now. And I used to do one or two. Two. I wasn't really into it until um, midway through the pandemic, and and then I I took this course on TikTok. It was like it's called TikTok Cat University, and it really opened my eyes to a lot of things about TikTok. You know, TikTok you can be silly, but you can learn a lot of stuff on TikTok. A lot. <laughs> I mean, there's different hacks. Like mm-hmm. one of the talking about is the pineapple. Like everybody slices up a pineapple, but the deal is that all you need to do is pull out one of the ridges to eat it. So everybody's eating, been eating it, I guess, except for Hawaiians or whoever knew the hack. Um, or people just get on there just to express themselves. Or sometimes they're depressed. Sometimes they're happy. Um, yeah. And I and I use it now. I'm really using it. But um, you know, and they tell you you need to do five videos a day. And at first I was like, oh. oh yeah, five videos. And I was just like, oh, who has time for that? And now I push myself to do it, and I have to come up with ideas. A lot of the times I'm trying to push my own singles, and I try to come up ideas, different ideas to do it. Like there's stitching, duets, all kinds of different things to do. Um, and then they talk about the same thing that I always talk about, authenticity. One of the key things in the, in the, on the, in the courses was, were like, People like videos that are authentic. You just being yourself, whether you're silly, being serious or whatever, those are the videos that do the best. They said that people stream TikTok more than they stream Netflix. They're short videos. Wow. Yeah. So you could sit there uh, on a daily basis just watching videos. I'm really bad 
when it comes to animal videos, I'll say, oh, I'm just going to look at something. And two hours later, <laughs> I know, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, Natalie, you need to get off of it. Um, the other thing that people are surprised about are now Facebook has Facebook Reels. So they they brought mm-hmm. that out in February. And it's very different than Instagram. It is and it isn't. So you have Instagram Reels, obviously, with Instagram. And then you have these Facebook Reels. Um, and recently, because I had t- been taking my TikToks and putting them on Facebook Reels, uh, Facebook contacted me and said, oh, do you want to change your profile to a professional and you can get paid to do your uh, Reels? And that's why I've been wow. more and more. But, I mean, it's just like Spotify. I have like a hundred and I don't know, 60,000 views on some of this stuff and well combined and they were and I got paid like $26 so basically you have to have like millions of views and you can make $35,000 a month just doing that but you just have to uh, find the right uh, but what I like about it is because I tend to get into depressive mode it takes my mind off of it and if I can do something Mm. funny or promote my music on it, then yeah. it, it does help me to get through mm-hmm. uh, the days somehow. But like I said, we, I mean, I mean, when you're creating music now, and not everybody has to do this, you have to really think, does my music work for all these platforms? Because people can take your music and it can go viral. Even with children's music, it works well. I know a lot of children's artists that are on TikTok, you know, they have, uh, read, they read the, the books on there. They, you know, act out the, the mm-hmm. songs on there, and it's a great tool to get noticed, especially if you're a brand and you're you guys are basically mm-hmm. a, are a brand. Um, and the other mm-hmm. thing is that you know, as as artists, especially artists like you and I that do different types of music, you know, we can stick to one genre, but it's great to have to be versatile because yeah. We are, but we are also a business. We need obviously need to make money so that we can continue this business. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah. Um, so yeah, being on all these platforms is just it's just crazy. Now, Facebook Reels is a little bit different. They say you can post one or two videos a day if you want to. Saturdays and Sundays are not great days to post on Facebook. I had to learn all about this algorithms and stuff like that. And sometimes. Wow. I- and sometimes I don't, but yeah, if you, if you, if you want to push you know, even your, your, this latest album, I would recommend doing something for each song on there. Even if you act out, even if you tell a story for each song on, on TikTok and then, mm-hmm. and then it's all about hashtagging all the hashtags you put on it. I think you, it, it, this, the album would do very well, very well on TikTok. Any, anything mm-hmm. that you, whether it's the 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 new album or the children's music that you're doing, I think you should consider you putting on putting on the outfit, put them on. Do a little bit. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I do listen. If 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 you end up doing it and you go viral, you say Natalie said. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Something to think yeah, we about. We haven't really explored that yet. Yeah, <laughs> we need it's, to do that. It's something Definitely. to think about, especially with your latest album. You know, there are different um, Jewish groups. There are different groups for yeah. people in Ukraine. People talk about mm-hmm. it. And, you know, this this album could really help them during this time. So really think about mm-hmm. you know, doing something on there. And, it's, it, and TikTok is fairly, very easy to use. So that's an idea mm-hmm. for you. Okay. Yeah. I think we need yeah, to I take need to that. that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving you more work, but I think it'll be yes, thank you. <laughs> I think it'll be very successful. Now, before I let you go, let everyone know where they can find your music. We are on Brilliant. pretty much every platform except for TikTok. Until today, <laughs> we will get on TikTok. <laughs> but you can find um, our music together at ruthandamelia.com or Ruth and Amelia on Instagram, Facebook, and you can find it on any streaming platform, all of our albums, as, including the singles. Um, and and then separately, uh, it's RuthMakesMusic.com, right? Yeah. 
mom. And then mine yeah. is AmeliaLopezYanez.com. All right. Awesome sauce. All right. Thank you so much, Ruth and Amelia, for being oh, on. Oh, thank today. you. Seriously, was, thank you so thank much. Thank you so it's much, Natalie. Oh, well, thank you. It was my pleasure. Well, you guys heard it here. Mother, daughter, music duo, Ruth Weber and Amelia Lopez Yanez. They are awesome. They've created amazing uh, music. Um, and if you don't, if you didn't, if you don't remember where to find them, Google them. Uh, Google is your <laughs> friend. Google is my friend. Just do it. And <laughs> if, if you do, you'll be able to find them on TikTok and they'll be able to uh, explain <laughs> Thing that they're doing and That's right to, yeah and you'll be able to see their little dances and all the things they do for children and this latest album which is obviously beautiful um and the songs that we did uh like greenly and amelia sang beautifully on that album check them out they are awesome thank you so much for being on chatting with nat um it was thank my you. Happy you. all right everyone that's chatting with nat until next time Chatting with Nat is a podcast for independent women seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower women. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard. Love your voice.